uh, Design and Conquer, Day 2, Print 17. Design and Conquer, Achieving Print Victory with Paper Technology. As I was talking about in the last panel, I've spent the last, what month is this, nine months? Nine months touring the country with Canon and Domtar Paper, as a matter of fact, visiting advertising agencies and brands and educating them about why the paper that they choose is a technology and a color as well as just a, something that ink goes on. And that how a, a paper and a paper family should be part of a design consideration and a marketing campaign consideration. Is there a right format component? Is there a, uh, a, a text component? Is there a paper that works for better for digital? Is there a paper that works better for inkjet? And um, to choose, learn how to choose their, their paper brands that they're going to be loyal to based upon the breadth of their bench, so to speak, uh, so that they can keep that consistency for that customer and also they're able to offer their customers more applications because there's more ways that they can expand it and still maybe stay within the brand consistency. So paper is a really important thing to me personally and uh, I welcome everybody to the panel today. Um, so we'll start off with um, somebody who I am thrilled to death to welcome back to the Printiverse. Does everybody know Red Cooler Ron from GPA? <laughs> Some people might think I'm maybe a little bit of a, let's say, print celebrity, but this is the real print celebrity right here, Red Cooler Ron. Um, maybe you'll give a little background about Red Cooler Ron and then um, let people know uh, beyond that what you do and how GPA is helping customers make money. Thank you, Deborah and Printiverse. Uh, Red Cooler Ron from uh, GPA and actually Minneapolis is home when I'm there. Uh, the whole re thing about the Red Cooler is that's been my suitcase for the last 15 years. I travel with all of my different paper samples and clothes and everything's in the Red Cooler. When I get to where I'm going, everything comes out and cold drinks go into the Red Cooler. So um, it's been quite a journey, uh, especially these last eight months. I had to step away from the industry and the business and fight, get in a fist fight with cancer uh, up until May when I came back. And uh, it's great to be back. God bless our health, our industry and America on this 9-11 Patriots Day. And as far as how, uh, what I do, I'm director of digital media for GPA and how we help our customers make money is basically help them work with them upstream to understand the markets that they're working with, the applications, the papers and the plastics that they're trying to uh, bring as their solutions. So understanding the maps of what they're trying to do to help their customers make money. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, GPA has been in the uh, Printiverse Alliance since day one, so thank you so much for your support. And it is my pleasure to introduce a new Alliance member. We love new Alliance members. So Susan Murray from Mitsubishi Paper, uh, Mitsubishi Imaging, my apologies. and. Um, why don't you tell, um, I mean, it's very intriguing to people probably, Mitsubishi Imaging, you know, what, what is that? So why don't you tell people who you are, what you do, and how you're helping your customers make money? My name is Susan Murray. They definitely can't hear you. Oh, okay. I'm Susan Murray and I work with Mitsubishi Paper Mills. You good in the back? Okay. Um, yeah. And Mitsubishi Imaging uh, is the sales force and distribution channel for Mitsubishi paper mills and other leading um, paper manufacturers. And what we do to help our customers make money is um, we work for towards efficiencies. So our we developed a inkjet coating that goes on top of our base paper that actually helps the paper deliver brilliant color and line um, acidity and um, it actually helps the paper run through the presses at our production inkjet paper I should specify it helps speed the paper through the press so the ink gets actually trapped in the coating of the paper instead of seeping into the fibers of the paper so it helps the presses run at greater speeds and efficiencies and actually lowers ink consumption um, when, uh, 
drawing print jobs, obviously. Um, and that's pretty much what we do from the paper side. And even our resin-coated microfiber papers also have that coating technology for regular standard ink check. So um, at the Outlook customer panel, and at least one time here, your paper was called out as the paper that they use on their inkjet when they want to make it look the best from a printer. Just so, I'm just passing along information yeah. that anyone can see on the live stream or from the recording from the show. Yeah, we actually get shipped um, as part of the OEM's paper of choice with the machines. So yeah, that's so, also great. So that, that must be the connection there. Yeah. So Ashley, Project Peacock partner, <laughs> who are you, what do you do, and how is Domtar helping customer, their customers make money? I am Ashley Madak. I'm the marketing and brand manager for our Cougar, Lynx, Husky, Inkjet, and Converting brands. Um, we also have a line of specialty media and business papers that's managed by another brand manager. But um, my background is I actually studied graphic design in school. That's what I have my degree in. And that's what I did for over a decade. So um, what I bring to Domtar is the end user and brand perspective of what they're looking for from a printer and also from um, a paper company company, what their, what their mindset is when they're making these decisions. And um, Domtar provides a lot of resources to share those um, mindsets, but also, you know, we work with all the OEMs and all the, um, all the equipment manufacturers to make sure that our papers um, are the best suited for the different technologies, and we provide a wide line of different options. Thank you so much. And um, now we have Chris Taylor from Rico. Rico, I believe this is your second year in a row in the Printiverse. We skipped one year and you will back one more. So I'll count it as a 3 P. Yeah, Welcome back. Thank you so much. And uh, actually, Domtar, this is your first official time in the Printiverse, although you do have sponsored the Girls Who Print Buttons for the last two years. So welcome to Domtar, too. Um, so Chris from Rico. Who are you, what do you do, and how is Rico helping its customers make money through, I guess, paper education or any way you'd like to take that? So my name is Chris Taylor. I'm the field product manager for production for Rico. I support um, our US dealer channel. I support Rico Canada. Um, one of the unique things that Rico brings to the table is we actually have um, a fifth station on one of our print engines, which enables you to print white, clear, neon yellow, infrared, and also neon pink, and we actually have a program um, which is called the 7100 Game Changer Workshop, which is designed to show printers how they can make money with these unique colors and specialty substrates um, based around these specific applications. And you hit on a key point, um, Deb. We have, uh, so we have different seminars based around unique applications to show uh, printers how they can make money based around the substrates. Cool, so um, obviously everyone's on a paper panel. They have a vested interest in paper, which makes me happy. Um, every Wednesday, four o'clock Eastern time, I host Print Chat. And it's from the people who attend Print Chat that I find out what the subject, the topics are that they're interested in. And that's how I formulate the topics for the Printiverse panels. And then once I formulate the topics based upon the subjects they care about, I go back and ask them, what would you ask a panel of experts on these topics that you care about? So I actually have questions from the people because you guys don't want to hear from me. I'm really just here to be an ambassador and share information. So this is, um, now remember, these are from the people. This is what they want to know. Um, so Todd Cordhill, longtime uh, print chatter, shout out to you guys. Um, what tests, what are the tests printers should do on their equipment before recommending the use of new paper and substrates to customers. And this is kind of conversational at this point because I feel like I'm just asking the question from the people. So just go ahead, Rob. So right? you need to do this in conjunction with your production team and primarily the, the, the press operator because oftentimes what happens is we're out there specifying these beautiful papers with the design community, with the sales teams, and we oftentimes forget where we should be starting is with the production team to make sure that they've uh, uh, checked the caliper on the product, checked the sizes, the shade of the product, um, the different papers, 
um, that they need to be testing the paper path and make sure that it's going to uh, uh, feed, deliver uh, properly, that, that there's no static that's being created on the machine. Um, and typically what happens is that's where they'll stop instead of going further into the bindery and finishing. And if, especially if, if it's something that requires uh, a very robust application, they need to try not just 10 sheets or 100 sheets, but they need to push the paper and the substrate through the entire production chain. Thanks. Ashley? Yeah, I agree with that. And I think it came up once during a print chat that um, you guys hear? pretty much unanimously everyone decided that bindery is where most of the mistakes happen. So that's a very good point. Oh, uh, Chris, Susan, you want to add to that? Sure. No, was, um. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. <laughs> Great. I'll be more organized next question. So I completely agree with everything that everybody on the panel has said thus far. Um, one of the things I'd recommend, especially with working with Rico, we actually have, you know, basically an in-house testing facility of key substrates like the GPAs, like the DOMTARs. So if they're going to be printing on unique specialty substrates, Sometimes, periodically, um, the media gets approved where there might be caveats with, this, with the particular media. They may have to run it at a particular speed, um, yada, yada, yada. Um, just make sure when you test the paper, you wouldn't need to do extensive testing, but do a short run and show it to the customer and make sure that they're okay with the caveats that come with that particular media. Um, and actually, before uh, we go to Susan, there was actually a follow-up question specifically for you. Uh, okay. Because your uh, Rico was a manufacturer, and they knew sure. you were on the panel, hmm? and they wanted to know: Does the use of paper or substrates that came out post press purchase uh -huh. um, void any aspect of the press warranty? Well, what I would say is, as long as the media is approved, as long as they follow the process to get the media approved, it wouldn't void the press warranty. As long as the media is approved. Okay, so that was for Robert Godwin. He asked that question. So, um, Susan, back to you. Uh, what tests should the printers do on their equipment before recommending the use of new papers and substrates to their customers? Well, I would say the thing to look for is to look for per papers that have been certified, just like he said. Um, Mitsubishi works with various OEMs to test their papers prior to release to make sure that it works um, through various different types of printers. So I would say that, that that's really what you need to look out for is to make sure that they are certified to run on various different presses. Cool, so not only are, um, am I uh, asking questions for the printers and the uh, people out in the printiverse, we actually bought a print chatter and a printer to the printiverse to sit here watch the panels and ask you real people questions. So this is Jamin McClellan. He's from Allegra Princeton in New Jersey. His uh, print shop is pretty much an all one-stop print shop. He uses a variety of equipment, which made him a neutral party. Uh, so Jamie, do you have a question for the panel? I hope you do after that introduction. That would be pretty. That yes, would be I do. Pretty, uh, no, um, actually, I don't. I'm being like, all right then. <laughs> Check, please. The hardest part for print, small printing companies is where do we get all these new papers? Where can we find samples of it? I, you know, can you guys do you guys send them out regularly to just the, your your distributors, or do you send them directly to the printing companies? That's the hardest part, getting the new samples. Uh, How Ashley, do we get that? we'll start with you, and then we'll come. We'll come. Well, um, we actually have a magazine called the Blue Line Magazine, and if you're a subscriber to that, we're going to send you um, our promotions. But um, also, we work with um, several merchants that can get you samples, and or you can contact their fulfillment and get samples directly. But but how are people supposed to find out that information to begin with? Is it on your website? Like, Jamie wants you to start at square one. I need a paper, right? Like, where do I? F how do I find out what papers? Or, or right? Is that what you're saying? You know, we might see pictures somewhere, but where? How do we get it in our hands? Besides calling our rep, now? you know, is there somewhere direct line to you guys? Okay. Go ahead, Chris. I mean, a lot of the uh, paper manufacturers actually create an updated swatch book each year, um, showcasing the new papers. So I, I'd say you could start with that. Yeah, but there's no spec reps anymore. They don't. They don't give them to people. Do they send them to you unless you request them? No. See. 
What, what we're basically telling you is that the process is a little broken between the people who have the paper and the people who need the paper. So here's a real printer telling you, mm -hmm. asking you, where do I get information about your paper? Yes. Domtar.com. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, does, does that help? I guess what he's saying is, how is he supposed to know you have something new out? How is he supposed to get education about what that new substrate might do? Do you do education webinars? Red Cooler on, take it. Um, what kind of stuff are you doing? So the, the first thing I'll do is make sure you're dialed into everybody's press releases, okay? No matter what your avenue for that is or what social media, you know, that, that's the speed of the information, okay? From there, whether it's some of the mills who have spec reps or your OEM partners, for us, we have 30 people who represent our company answer. across the country. And there's on, only so many people you can see in a given month, week, and day. So you have to be proactive online with getting the press releases. They're coming out every single day. And if it's something that catches your attention, take they action right day. now and reach out to whomever your contact point is from that particular mill, um, from that particular merchant. Um, but you need to be proactive with that because by the time it gets to you, it may have gotten to your competitor already. So um, we, we've got a very formal, uh, uh, formal process as far as, uh, like we heard, dot com, just, just pick up the phone and ask GPA. Pick up the phone and call us. If you read something, you saw something, you heard about something, you've got a particular market application or paper solution that you're trying to create, we'll send it right out. Um, and then we encourage you to not only look and, and, look and uh, uh, feel it, push it through its limits. Um, check the swatch books right away. But as far as for what's new, you got to leverage your, your, your social media and your, your, your uh, PR uh, channels out there. Susan? There's also various websites like Paper Finder that you can go on and look and see what has been released as well too. So there are some app, uh, uh, websites that you can go on that also promote various papers. Any more questions? Uh, okay. Uh, can, right. I, can I add something to that? Yes, please. Oh, my apologies, of course. Okay. The other thing is a lot of the, um, the manufacturing partners of digital press technology like Rico, we will put on educational seminars. Like we'll put on educational seminars like Lunch and Learns or we'll have open houses at different um, branches or dealer events and we'll give seminars on some of the new papers around applications you can do and we'll provide print samples and live printing of those new papers. Um, that was actually one of the, uh, you good? You got another one? Does anyone have a question for the paper panel? Oh, we have a question. Oh, we have John. The walk of shame, uh -oh. people. This uh -oh. is what the walk of shame looks like. This is the late panelist. <laughs> this is the walk of shame. He is so lucky that he's one of my favorite people on this planet. Because remember in my email when I said someone was on probation? Now it's me? Yes. All right. <laughs> OK, I'm only kidding. Johnny P. Um, it's okay. Um, actually, it, to me, I'm always happy when you're not here because that means to me you can't get out of your booth, otherwise you would be here. After last year almost being late, nobody would want to go through that walk of shame ever again, so it must have been a good reason. Um, let's just give you some air time because you, you deserve some. So just tell the people really quickly who you are, what you're doing, and how you're helping your customers make money, and then I'll catch you up to the conversation a little. All right, thank you so much, Deborah, and again, I apologize. So uh, my name is John Palazzolo, I'm with Adfos North America, and what we do is we don't make inkjet, we just make inkjet better. So uh, right now, there's a big trend in the market for a higher speed water-based inkjet. People are wanting to image on glossier stocks or maybe less expensive stocks. And what we do is we use a drying technology that enables them to get higher speeds, higher throughput, better permanence, flatter sheets, so that they can do their finishing and things much faster and better. So let's take it to the ground level here, right? What is the relationship between inkjet ink and paper? And why is the drying process one of the biggest topics of conversations among, uh, like, almost equal to ink cost. Okay, so um, you, you mentioned earlier today that we have a customer that has a, uh, an inkjet press. It's a very, very wide inkjet press. And they're actually putting down 800 liters of water per hour 
onto a sheet. So as you know, when you manufacture paper, traditional paper, that is a process that uses water. So um, when you re-add the water to the sheet, that causes fiber swelling, which causes cockle and curl of paper. So the idea is, is to get the, the ink or the water back off of the sheet as quickly as possible before the, the water damages the sheet. So, and it was, you said about print quality, what our technology does is because it is, it is a thermal technology that we're removing, but we can place it so close to the print heads that you can actually use less ink and still get the color vibrancy, the, the density versus, you know, because you're not soaking into the paper. I mean, anybody who's ever bought print knows the importance of it being dry before people do anything with it. I've had mine stuck together, you know, there's, there's pieces missing because it rubbed off or, you know, it, it smudges on your hands. I mean, drying is, drying is to paper, you know, as drying is to paper. There is no analogy for it, you have to have it. Right. But to achieve uh, the print victory, you know, that's why we call papers a technology because the paper technology works with the press technology, works with the drying technology, works with the ink technology. It's all technology now, talking to each other, like, like, in, like in the Apple universe, if you think about it. And you want to get into these systems that work with each other and can optimize your output, which is really what the, these panels are all about. Finding, listening to the people that can enhance what you have or give you knowledge that you don't have and you can continue to learn from them after this panel. So um, I actually have another question from the, um, the Printiverse, and um, it, part of it is a combo question, and part of it is from Kelly Malazzi, and she's actually right back there. She was at our print chat where we um, crowdsource questions, and the other part of it is from Marcy Kinter, who's from SGIA, and they wanted to know, um, what is your company's environmental commitment in regard to paper and are you supporting sustainable forestry and providing education on this subject? And I just want to interject that um, we visited uh, Project Peacock uh, in the Bay Area two weeks ago. And let me tell you something, I can't even believe I got a water bottle into the office. They are not playing on that side of the country. With It's not about whether it's recycled. It's not about whether it's FSC certified. They're assuming that's all they're buying. It's whether or not they want to touch a piece of paper at all. Is there the way that they're thinking about it? Is it necessary? And until we kind of you know, show them that there's ways that all this stuff can, can work together, um, that um, it's important. So this is why this question is so topical. So Ashley, I'm gonna start with you because you're actually, um, and I'll start with the paper mills and then we'll go from there. Okay, well, um, you know, environmentally, environmental practice has always been a big deal for Domtar. We actually um, pioneered some of those relationships with um, FSC, WWF, and that kind of thing. But um, we also like to educate people on um, sustainability being more than just what's the recycled content. It's where does the paper come from? Does it come from places where it's responsibly managed forest, or do they just clear cut all the trees? You know, um, what are the employees treated like at these different facilities? So. Um, I think a lot of people still um, don't understand that the decisions they make when you um, select a lot of different things, not just paper, d do have a broad reaching impact to different people. So we try to educate people on that. We actually do have a paper school going on tomorrow morning that's um, done by our sustainability manager, Dan Persica. Thank you so much. Uh, Chris? No? Oh. Sorry, <laughs> that's okay. Um, Mitsubishi um, it has a strong commitment to uh, environmental sustainability. Our forests are all forest managed certified. We also have full chain of custody on all of our papers. So our, we own our wood chip. We have forests in Chile. We, our papers are made of eucalyptus. Um, our afforestation rate compared to our production is a, a lot higher. It's really unmatched in the industry. Um, so we are uh, fully committed to sustainability. In terms of education, we work uh, with um, two sides and we um, 
and we have a good standing relationship with them, especially our mills in Japan and in Germany. Thanks so much. And actually, let's keep that this microphone with those two guys, and, okay. and you guys keep it there. So, uh, GP Ron, Red Cooler Ron. Is for are you? I also just want to know. Also, you seeing this trend in requests? So let's start from there. Yeah. So regarding that trend in request and the environmental commitment, um, for for those of you who are able to be here and to, tour the the show in the booth, there's actually a brown craft that we're showcasing, that is 100% uh, PCW sheet. Uh, at the mill where this is made, there are 20 trucks of of garbage basically brought in every day, turned into 19 truckloads worth of uh, uh, packaging product, both graphic arts, quality, printability, four six color, over four six color, bending chip, smooth, just a beautiful craft paper, uh, stocked in an 18 point, a 24 point, and you can make it in just about uh, any heavyweight caliper, you would need it. And that was developed around the market for people who are asking for more and more uh, sustainability, more and more commitment to the environment. From there, there's everything from, uh, if, if you're talking about just recycled content, from 10 to 30% PCW all the way up to 100% PCW available uh, to you if that's important to you and your clients. And yes, we do know it is out west. Uh, you know, a company who's actually named themselves Greener Printer, and they've been called that for years. And that's all they want to print on is uh, uh, papers that have as close to 100% recycled content as possible. So uh, I believe the trend is still there, um, but it depends on, on you and your clients and what markets you serve. Right, the, the millennials also like the, to be involved in, in you know, more ecological endeavors than, than not. And certainly the brands want to sell to them, so it all becomes a value chain proposition as well. John, does Adfos have a um, sustainability story? And then please uh, just let people how they can uh, know how they can get in touch with you here and after the show, and then we'll wrap up the panel. Thank you. We actually do. Uh, you can unlike... take the mic out, All actually. Right. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Um, <laughs> our, our sustainability story is a little bit different. Our sustainability story really has to do more with the amount of electricity that is used. Again, we're not producing paper, so we don't, we're not cutting down trees, but we want to make sure that we're removing the water and doing it as, as economically as possible. Did you with just as say little... cutting down trees? I did. Uh, harvesting trees. Harvesting tree. trees. Okay, sorry about that. I was like, that um, didn't, I think I had an aneurysm <laughs> on my, on my, I do the marketing for two sides, hell no, uh, to cutting down trees. So we don't, we, we, so we're not involved in harvesting trees. Thank um, you. What we're involved in, again, is, is taking the process and using as little electricity as possible. So with ADFOS NIR technology, typically we use anywhere between 40 and 50% less energy, which again has an environmental impact. Okay, so I don't know if I want people to get in touch with you now. I'm very upset with you. <laughs> but, but now that you've learned your lesson. Well, when I think of harvesting, no. I think about other things other <laughs> like, than, like than trees. Well, like, people, like, <laughs> well, whatever it is, you need it. I'm a product of the you 70s, honey. It, I think about other things again. other than harvesting All right, trees. Fine. So, uh, <laughs> All right, tell everybody how they can get in touch. So, uh, Adfos, we have a booth 2348. You can also reach us on Twitter at, at Adfos. You can also reach us via um, Facebook and all the other social media things. Or you can just drag me out of the booth like just happened just now because I was late. So, again, thank, thank you, you. Thank you, John. Red Cooler Ron, how can people get in touch? GPA is here at booth 3840, and we highly recommend that uh, you go to askgpa.com. If, if you prefer Twitter, as we all do uh, uh, in the Twitterverse, in the Printerverse uh, uh, at Ask GPA. Um, the, the best thing to do to connect with us is, is if you don't uh, spend enough time with your uh, local GPA rep, the more time you're spending with that person, they're there to bring you solutions every single day. Um, and when they're not spending time with you, they're spending time with your competition. So uh, be proactive in reaching out and connecting uh, to grow your business and make more money. Thanks, Tom. And thanks so much, and Ron, it's so great to have you back in the Printiverse. Good to see you. Susan, how can people get in touch with Mitsubishi Imaging? You can uh, certainly find us in booth 2655 here at um, uh, Print 17. We'll also be at SGIA. 
Um, and you can reach us online at MitsubishiImaging.com or you can visit one of our paper mill websites too, Mitsubishi uh, Paper Mills and Mitsubishi Paper G Mills Germany. Thank you so much. And again, thank you for joining the Alliance this year. Really happy to have you. Ashley. We're at booth 3240, um, two websites, domtar.com and domtarblueline.com, and we're also very active on Twitter at the Domtar Blue Line handle. And at our booth, we have a few of our OEM relationship managers, so if you have um, questions about our paper with specific machines, just stop by, 3240. And Chris, everyone's probably passed your booth maybe a few times uh, on the way over here. We hope so. Um, <laughs> If you'd like to get in contact with us over the next few days while we're here at Print 17, just please come down and see us at uh, Booth 2022. Um, we do have multiple websites, but the easiest website to uh, get in contact with us would be www.rico-usa.com. And then we have RICO representatives all over North America, so it would just be a matter of getting in touch with your local RICO representative. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you spending your time. Thanks to the audience for spending their time. Um, thanks to everybody who watching online or will watch online. And uh, coming up, we have a uh, social media panel now trending the strategy of social customer service with special guest David Johnson from the TSA. Yes, the TSA social head of social media is going to be on this panel. He's had a rough couple of days, this guy, but he's awesome. <laughs>